This is our Forex blog for February 27th, 2014, and our Forex signals are just becoming extremely good. Um, we use close to 150 different patterns that find very high probability trades. You can see, you know, big move, big move, small loss, big move, huge move, small uh, loss, maybe you'd be long here at 56, out here at 51, so less than a 5 pip loss. Small loss, small loss, huge win, pretty much 4 pip uh, loss and small win. If you, you know, don't want to have to learn how to trade, you can just take our Forex signals. Uh, these are our currency indexes, which is my personal favorite uh, method of trading. And we recently got our uh, VWAP volume weighted average price to work with these indexes and what this does is it basically shows you the average price for the day and above that level you want to look for buys below that levels you want to look for sells and it's an amazing tool uh, for instance uh, I noticed in the uh, Australian dollar is trending down today if you add this indicator we also let you continue it over for the previous day so you can see basically the last two days average price. Look where it went to today, the Australian dollar index, right to the average price of yesterday and today. Because this is real. This is where most traders have a position for the last two days. The yellow line is where they have a position today. And then we have the hourly moving average in the middle and the 15 minute moving average, which is also green. It is a very high probability uh, method for finding one or two extremely high probability trades each day. For instance, the New Zealand dollar, it's above the previous day's high. The daily, weekly, monthly trend is up. You get a pullback. Where, did it, where does it go to? Right to VWAP. And so this is, you know, almost an idealized place to be buying. Now, also notice our perfect oscillator is at the minus 80 level. Typically, these are areas where you're going to get reversals, uh, whether it's with the trend or even against it. Notice here, here, found the high up here, here, and here. If you notice, you know, it reverses down, reverses up, pretty much goes, goes sideways to down, perfect place to sell. You know, when you, so when you combine all of our statistical models, which are all completely different, they use completely different data, completely different statistical models, uh, you can increase your odds of trading. And basically, how you use these currency indexes is pretty simple. You look to buy the strongest currencies versus the weak. So you can see the New Zealand trending up all day. The dollar, uh, especially when it, you know it tried to make a high, a high earlier, it never even went up to the previous day's high. It failed to go above this previous swing high, which you can clearly see on the chart. Um, Here's the low. It really has to break this before it's in a confirmed downtrend. But it tries to test the lows, comes back up, and you have really uh, a slew of different resistance areas right here. The VWAP, which is the price most traded for the day. So anyone who was long earlier from yesterday, uh, you know, this is an area where uh, a lot of them are have their position. So when they're when it's underneath that area, if they're long, they are losing money. When it comes back up to that area, this is a chance for them to get out of that trade. Uh, at break even. So there's just human uh, emotion at this VWAP level, and that's why it works so well. Uh, and so, you know, the dollar was weak, the New Zealand was strong, so basically you're looking to buy the New Zealand dollar on pullbacks, sideways rectangle patterns, and you can also uh, use this uh, VWAP tool, and we call it the balance point line, uh, on the actual individual currency too. So notice this one is above the two-day average price and that can, continues over from the previous day. It makes a nice move up. This is also a Fibonacci area, which again, the more you know, the more you earn in Forex typically. This is a 50% Fibonacci pullback. You have your Fib profit targets up here. And the New Zealand was strong, the dollar was weak. Uh, very high probability uh, place to get in. And really, when you, you buy this, you know, whether you got in on this bar or the breakout of the bar, your risk is just a pip or two underneath this low. So this is your risk. You're never going to catch every pip, but let's just say you're in this and you got out, you know, uh, somewhere around here as it's pulling back. Notice that's two to two and a half times bigger profit than what your risk is. 
and you will find that these methods are also extremely high probability and uh, you know there's a lot of different entry methods that you can use to get in uh, basically there's two main ones that I personally use when uh, trading one is a pullback which is my preferred method so you have a nice you know move up right here you got a pullback you wait for a trend line to get broken you buy again with your stop right underneath the low very small risk here's another example and then the, the second entry method is just simply a rectangle pattern breakout uh, rectangle patterns are best when they're at least an hour and a half or longer the longer the better you know here we're at the highs and there should be some selling at the highs to cause a, a pullback and there's not so there's no sellers at the high you have an hour and a half two hours to prove that and so when it breaks out it's very likely to go to the next level uh, and the more up a currency is the more likely it is to go to the fib target so you want to let's just get rid of the fib levels on here draw your fibs off the last swing low to this high and you already have and look notice how it went to the pip right to the fib target you would buy this breakout and so you have kind of a sideways area so from this point and onward when it breaks out of the high you can get in be long right here your stop is underneath here now this isn't uh, towards the end of the trends your risk versus reward is not quite as high if you got into this trade and this was your stop you know it's having trouble here and it pulls back a little bit when it comes back up again I'd move my stop to here you don't if it goes up again and fails and comes back down you don't need to uh, lose as much which in this case is only 15 pips you can get out right here with maybe an 8 pip loss and so you got a win and a lot of times you have smaller losses than what your initial risk is you know the first profit target and the second profit target if it stalled here I'd get out of half because it's already gone up pulled back gone up got pulled back gone up sideways this is, you know, possibly the end of the up move. You can use, also use our other drawing tools, such as uh, the Andrews Pitchfork, which is not my favorite. I rarely use this. And typically it's for extremely strong trends. Once you draw it on there, if you hold your shift key down and you push here, it'll kind of give you an idea of where uh, a future profit target is. So notice this was where the Fibonacci profit target was for those who use Andrews pitchforks, or in this case, the modified Andrews pitchfork, you can shift back and forth. Uh, the second one is more likely to be uh, an adequate uh, target than the first one. The first one's uh, maybe for longer time frame trends. And you can also use one of my favorites, the uh, trend channels. You draw it on here, and then you project it from the high. And this will basically take the trend line off the lows and then project that slope off the highs and it also lets you see uh, quadrants you can see the midpoint you can see the upper quadrant the lower quadrant uh, and oftentimes uh, strong trends aren't going to pull back to this lower level uh, but you can find entries if you're not already in this trade you know around here so you can have smaller losses when, when you learn some of these other methods you know instead of waiting for the breakout of this high here In fact, yeah, you could have uh, actually got into it right here when it touched it and bounced off it with a super tiny 5-6 pip loss, which uh, if you're wrong, in this case you weren't, it went up, pulled back, you move your stop up. In this case, you by buying this pullback with this tool, you have probably an 8 times, 6 to 8 times bigger win than what your super tiny risk is. And so that's a, another method uh, to use once you've identified the currency using our currency indexes. It's just a very high probability way of trading. So let's look at one more example. Uh, here's the pound. You can see the longer term trend is up, daily, weekly, monthly trend. It goes from underneath the hourly to back above it. It's breaking the hourly right here. It's breaking the VWAP for the day. It's breaking uh, the 15 minute moving average. And we'll add uh, the two day combined VWAP on there. Uh, and this is where traders from yesterday through today have most of their positions we will give this a weird color so we can uh, identify it on here we'll give it purple okay so you can see uh, yesterday's average price is right here and look where it bounced off of I mean it didn't get much of a bounce but that went right to that level and there were spires there as you would expect 
the orange area is last week's most traded price in all the pound pairs, so it's obviously going to be major support. If you don't get a bounce off of that, it's definitely going to go lower. It's probably 95% likely to go lower. So you could have possibly look for a buy right here when it failed. You'd have a small loss. You flip and go short and get your get your loss back. Plus, this nice little pullback here continues down again. Like I said, when these key areas are broken, they tend to uh, cause big moves because everyone jumps out of their positions. So let's take a look at this. It, first of all, it breaks today's VWAP, the hourly moving average, and the 15-minute moving average at all here. The more methods you use, the better your odds are because different traders use different methods. VWAP is usually used by the biggest uh, institutional traders in the world. Uh, it's obviously more important than uh, the 15 minute moving average. A lot of traders use the 20 uh, period moving average on the hourly chart which is what this gray area is here. So across all the, the pound pairs, uh, the pound is uh, amongst most of the pairs underneath its hourly moving average. That's very uh, big sign of weakness. So at three o'clock, this one's weak. Um, you can see the dollar just broke out. It was underneath its hourly for many hours. It was above uh, yesterday's average price, which you can see is right here. It's above today's average price. It shot from underneath above the hourly and then came back down and found support, which often happens. So you have a very high probability uh, pound uh, dollar uh, sell right here. So let's bring the pound dollar up here coming up till three o'clock and you can see it broke it's not only uh, below today's average price it's below the average price of yesterday and today so everyone who had long positions yesterday or I should say the majority of the positions long positions yesterday are right here uh, carrying over through today when it breaks down there it, people who are long from yesterday are losing money their stops are going to get hit it's going to cost some some fuel you know for this down move so you can uh, draw your fibs on this wave here. And again, look where it stopped at. And it's it's very likely to stop here because the pound's longer term trend is up. This is you know possibly some traders taking profits today, uh, counter trend traders taking uh, profits. And it's much more likely to stop at the first fib target when the longer term trend is up. So again, the key to trading is small losses, big wins. Let's say you went short right here, which stops by the, above the high. This is your risk. If you just held it when it came down here uh, on that first trade, you have, you know, maybe about two times, two and a half times, two and a quarter times bigger profit than what your risk is. And then after that, you uh, sell the pullback. Like I said, there's two entry methods. Preferred one's pullback. This is a super tiny risk. This is your profit target. You already know it ahead of time. And you can see it's four to five times bigger than what your risk is. And, you know, just to finish up today's blog, let me just showcase uh, again uh, the Andrews Pitchfork or some other tools that you can use. Again, the regular Andrews Pitchfork it tends to be too uh, steep. In this case, it didn't work at all. Again, I said uh, earlier, it's not my favorite uh, tool. And you can see today, uh, it was quite weak. It actually broke through uh, that trend channel. Now, obviously, the more time something gets hit, the better. Uh, it probably did a, pr a much better job of predicting the high today on this up move. Let's draw it off this, this up move here. Notice how it did overshoot that a little bit. And then it pulled back, and that was the end of the upmove. And it probably also was a, a, a fib area of below here to here. Pretty close. You know, the fib target being above the upper trend channel, uh, it's very likely to kind of run out of steam. But you can use the uh, balance point line in our next release. We're going to release this on uh, Sunday, or I'm sorry, over the weekend. And it's just one other tool to use in the currency indexes to help you identify which direction to trade in.